and welcome to tonight's truly educational but entertaining episode of Life Support. The only lifestyle show to tell you exactly how to live your life. By giving you all the experts with all the advice you need to know. This week I'll be giving you jubby girls some advice on how to beat those body image blues. I'll be showing all you stargazing dreamers who want to work in showbiz how to fast track it into a geek that doesn't need a scrap of effort or talent. And I'll be leading the whole life support team as we roll up the sleeves for one of our most ambitious projects ever. It's a totally top backyard transformation. Girls, I'm going to introduce you to a fabulous girly game that can satisfy your man's every whim and is guaranteed to get him going every time. Well, it certainly sounds like we're packed full tonight. Oh yeah, it's chockers. So are we delaying the get-go for any good reason? Uh, no. So let's get started. TV talent contests like this aren't the way to fast track it into showbiz. The reason being, they do actually require a bit of talent and they're pretty hard work. But if you want to work in showbiz without actually having to work at it, there is one gig you can get that doesn't require a scrap of effort or talent. So I looked at the guy dead in the eye and I said, mate, never on a Tuesday. <laughs> Stand up comedy. You can get as much as 80 bucks cash in the hand for just 20 minutes of crapping on. And I'm going to show you how. Now, you might think that getting up and telling jokes is tough, but that's only because you think you have to make up the jokes yourself. Not at all. Just do what most stand-ups do. Head down to your local CD store and plunder the comedy section. Bill Hicks, Lenny Bruce, Anthony Morgan... Even Woody Allen. People have been ripping off their material for years. When writers do it, they call it putting it in a new context. Sure, other stand-ups will know, but your very average comedy club audience wouldn't have a clue. <sighs> well, there you go. That's my routine all done. Sure, it took a little time, but I'll never have to write it or update it ever again. But look, if you've got an ethical problem with just ripping stuff off, then just make a lot of jokes about drugs or the banks. All pretty safe stuff. But to make it look like you're actually angry about it, then just yell a lot like you can't contain your rage. Sounds pretty lame. But you'd be amazed how many people get away with it. And remember, if you're from any sort of minority group, then just make a lot of jokes about yourself. Audiences love hearing Jewish jokes from a Jew because they can laugh about it without thinking they're racist. And a gay man doing fag shtick is a top way for an audience to enjoy reinforcing a stereotype. <laughs> now, remember, it doesn't matter if most of your jokes die in the ass and nobody laughs. That's pretty much the norm at most stand-up gigs. Just keep everything low concept and you'll be laughing even if the audience isn't. Now, please welcome to the stage my very funny friend, Penny! Oh, yeah, g'day. What's on them? Because it's restricted. <laughs> my name's Penny, and you've been a great audience. And that's all there is to it. Do this a couple of times, and guaranteed you'll be picked up by some two-bit panel program or breakfast radio show where you'll rake in the big bucks just for reading out newspaper or women's magazines. Now that's showbiz. See ya. Oh, g'day. Like most women, my lady friend likes to be cuddled all night long. And like a good man, 
I like to provide. The only problem is the spooning position makes no accommodation for your arm being laid on. It just lies there being crushed and starved of blood every night. And after a night of cuddling, you can kiss the use of your arm goodbye. Well, Todd's going to show you a way that you can spoon your lady friend for as long as she wants and still be able to use both arms in the morning. This is a typical foam mattress. If you use a spring mattress, ditch it and get one of these. They're much easier to cut. Now, figure out your normal sleeping position. Then, simply trace around the arm like this. Now all you need is a sharp blade and cut away. Perfect. Now let's test it out. I can't feel a thing. So now you can spoon your lady friend all night long and then be able to get up and build her a house. Well, that was interesting advice, wasn't it, Dr. Rudy? So tell me, what have we got coming up next? My word, Sagoni. You certainly are moving on quite quickly. Are we pressed for time at the minute? No. I just don't think we should be taking up valuable problem-solving time with idle pleasantries. But this certainly is a change, my dear. Sigourney. Yes, and a change for the better, I think. I was just eager to know... Yes? Well, I was wondering if since last week... Oh, that! A brief error of judgement on my part. I apologise. Well, I was sort of thinking... I'm sorry for putting you in such a compromising position. It was obviously very embarrassing for you. I never said that. I was simply my saying... My good doctor, you don't need to say anything. Not even if I wanted to. No. And I think it's better for all concerned if it stays that way. So, tell me, what have we got coming up next? Well, I really don't know. Why don't we take a look and see? modern age, it's impossible to get ahead in business without publicity. In my case, thanks to those bastard babysitters club books, my babysitting business is constantly inundated with competition and these ordinary posters just don't cut it. I need to come up with some kind of publicity that'll set myself apart. Fortunately, the grand old lady of shock pop, Madonna, has given me an idea. If you want to catch the public eye, nothing beats lady on lady love. Yes, I'm talking about girls tongue kissing. The folks can't get enough of it. It worked for Madonna, Ally McBeal, Virginia Woolf and every second television show. So I know it can work for me. All you have to do is find yourself a willing volunteer. I've asked Rebecca here to help me out. She's got her own reasons for going along with it. Yeah, that's right, Penny. You see, as a soap starlet, I know it's my job to do anything for publicity. So, once you've found yourself a willing publicity whore, all you have to do is employ a photographer and get jiggy with it. Where did you learn to do that? Oh, on my last series, the one about the beach. Oh. OK. So, anyway, once you've got your photo, you have the basis for your publicity campaign. Now that should attract some attention. So, if you need publicity for your business and you're prepared to be as morally bankrupt as Madonna, why not use lesbian love? It's guaranteed to turn heads. See ya. Yeah, g'day. It's an all too familiar and tragic scene in Australian backyards. And even though it's law to have a fence around your pool, statistically a kitty still drowns in an Australian pool every day. Gates can get left open, fences can get climbed, and supervising uncles can fall asleep. But if you take a tip from Todd, then you can avoid further family fatalities at your place. If you've got a grass area like this one, either around your pool or even around your pool fence, 
What you can do to deter the little ones getting in is to create a protective grassy moat. And the way to do that is with bindi eyes, or as Jamie Drury would say, saliva pterosperma, the common Australian bindi eye. We're all familiar with the distinctive pinch from a cluster of these guys when walking barefoot over a public park or oval. <laughs> That's nasty. Now once these little buggers get into an area, they take over in no time and they're virtually maintenance free. So pick some up from your local oval and simply transplant them to your lawn. Now, let's see if it works. So long as you keep the thongs locked in a safe place, you can decide when the kids go in the pool. There you go, kids. Bindi Eye Pool Protection. It's a little bit of extra effort for that added peace of mind. Pause it, ladies. Your body image is an important part of your self-esteem. And unfortunately, not everyone has the body of Elle McPherson. Or even Mimi. Women like Sula here have to go through life in the knowledge they will never reach that perfect level of attractiveness and desirability. But even people with slightly disgusting physiques need to be assured they are attractive. And against all the odds, it turns out to be possible. The key is to have a prompt. I've just pasted this photo of Sula onto some nameless fatty I've cut from a weight loss magazine. Now, whenever she has guests, They'll inquire about who that is, because people are drawn to the abnormal. Obviously, they won't say, who is this grotesquely fat woman? They'll say something like, is this your sister? And that's when Sula explains this was actually her before she lost all her weight. Immediately, they'll start congratulating her on her marvellous achievement and telling her how fantastic she looks now. And there you have it. Good body image for the person who doesn't have a good body. So don't go without flattery and compliments just because you don't deserve them. Bye now. Well, Penny, what a terrific show we're having tonight. So tell me, what have we got coming up next? Well, I was just wondering why you're being a bit cold towards Dr Rudy at the minute. Isn't everything going your way? Uh, Penny, I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. Well, are you giving him the cold shoulder because you want him to take up the chase or... Have you just lost interest? Ah, uh, Penny, I don't think anyone's really interested in all this. And I thought you didn't know what I was talking about. Well, what's caused your change of heart? Oh, come on, it's been a pretty drastic 180. I guess it just wasn't our time. Gee, Sigourney, that's too bad. Still, maybe it's for the best. And I've got to say, I kind of dig the sacrifice you've made. Sacrifice? How so? Well, you've spent your life dedicated to showing modern women how to get their man and in the process your own man is slipping through your fingers. Oh Penny, I don't think I'd put it quite that way. Well anyway, I admire dedicated people. It shows you've got real passion. Passion, yes. Yeah, do you believe passionately in something when so many people don't believe in anything? Even though I don't agree with your philosophy, I dig the way you're dedicated to it. Oh, thank you Penny. Thank you very much. No biggie. So, what's coming up next? I don't know, but why don't we take a look? Oh, good day, and welcome to a very special Todd's Tips. I want you to meet a very special and very brave friend of mine. This is Heather. Recently, Heather lost her leg to an infection, and it's left her in this wheelchair. Now, before this tragedy, there was nothing she enjoyed more than spending time pottering around in her garden. But now, because of this cumbersome contraption, her garden is going to need some minor alterations so that Heather can still enjoy it. And that's what life support is all about. Let's get to work. Hi, Heather. My name's Sigourney. Hi. Oh, I love your skirt. Oh, thanks. It's lovely. Tranquil 
and traditional Japanese pebble garden. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, life support. Now, the thing with the Japanese pebble garden is that they constantly need to be raked to form different designs. So, a quick spin in your chair oh. and the wheels <laughs> will weave the patterns for you. Okay. Well, don't be polite. Get in there and give it a go. So, take a tip from Todd. If you've lost a leg to gangrene, well, that doesn't mean you can't enjoy having a green thumb. <laughs> Simply take a plan from Japan and pebble your patch and use some Zen culture to enjoy your horticulture. They milk the system. They love being the centre of attention. Look at me, I'm disabled. You know? They get a disabled pension. They get, you know, parking right out the front of the shopping centre. Why can't we park right out the front? Why do they have to get the parking right out the front? Here in Australia, with the government, they've got pension, they get all the privileges, they get more discounts than me, and I'm a student, you know what I mean? With that disabled pension, I mean, you can fucking, you can fucking use that to, I mean, anyone's fucking advantage, right? Do I go out and say, give me this because I can't support myself? It's bullshit. Since the beginning of time, modern women have sought out ways to increase their man's sexual fulfilment. But sometimes, just being you is not enough. So in order to keep ourselves fresh and fascinating, sometimes we have to become a fetish character. This is a fetish fashion favourite. She conjures up feelings of vulnerability in a man as he imagines what this naughty nurse would do to him. But sadly, masochistic medical methods are not for my man. The sweet innocence of this frilly feminine fetish makes it one of most men's favourites. But happily, my man says it's far too close to my natural self. The all over resonance of rubber is often a winner. But frustration comes fast when he realises he can't find his way in. <sighs> so let's face it girls, none of these regular fetish characters work all the time, every time. But don't worry, there is a character who knows your man's every desire knows how to satisfy his every whim, and is guaranteed to get him going every time. That's right, someone he loves more than anyone in the world, himself. Let's face it, if there's anyone guaranteed to get him off every time, it's him. Well, Penny, can I ask you a question? Are we talking more about our personal lives this year? Oh, I don't know. Well, if we are, I hadn't noticed. Yeah, we seem to be sharing a lot more with our audience. Oh, well, they're interested in what goes on. If they want to know, I say let them know. Yeah, right. So it's a bit of a shame that the Sigourney and Dr Rudy thing didn't work out. Oh, don't be too crushed. I don't think we've seen the end of that. But, you know, an office romance is a pretty hard thing to pull off. Yeah, so what? You don't believe in that sort of thing, you know? Mixing business with pleasure? Oh, no, I didn't say that. But it's plagued with problems. You know, you start something with a guy and it's tops for a bit yeah. and then inevitably it hits the downward slide and you have to go to all the trouble of having him fired so you don't have to see him again. Oh, it's a lot of work. You're speaking from experience there, are you? I've done my fair share of business hours bonking. So you wouldn't do that sort of thing again? You know, if the situation presented itself? Well, it depends. But I never rule anything out. Yeah, I hear Loud and clear. Todd. What? I think we should move on now. What, did you think I was... Because I wasn't... Yeah, whatever. Let's just take a look at the next segment. Yeah, well, that's what I want to do. How's it? Dr. Rudy, huh? You know it's hard in these politically correct times to know if you are being chivalrous or chauvinistic. For instance, when you take a woman out for dinner, how do you know if you should pay for a meal or if you are going Dutch? The answer is in the meal she orders. For example, if she skips the entree, then orders a salad for her main, then claims she's on a diet when the dessert menu arrives, well then you should pick up the bill. It would be rude not to. On the other hand, if she orders an entree, followed by something rich and heavy for her main, then a dessert after that, well then you should let her pay for herself because it's quite clear she has no intention of having sex with you at the end of the night. That's right. 
She won't want to get naked and physical with you on an extremely full stomach, so Dutch it is. The best thing about this is that the meal you pay for is always the cheaper meal. Just remember to keep on your toes. Some women will order everything on the menu, then just pick at it, leaving most of the meal on a plate. This means there probably will be sex at the end of the night, but it's expensive, so it's just best not to get involved with a woman like this. So men, there you have it. When should you pay? Let her decide. Bye now. Can I help? Yes, you can help by sitting over there. Oh dear. Now he's going to sulk. Men are so big and meaty, it's easy to forget they have such fragile little egos. Which is why as a modern woman, it's important to cherish your man's self-worth. You need to make him feel needed. So I'm going to show you a nifty little trick you can use at home that will make your man always feel indispensable. When you do your grocery shopping for the week, set aside all the jars. Then, take a chain grip and tighten all the lids. Oh, can I help you with that, sweetheart? Oh, yes, please. I can't open it. <laughs> there you go. Where would you be without me, hey? I'd be lost. <laughs> and that's all there is to it. So if you want your boyfriend to feel like the big man, you only have to give him something little to do. So get yourself a tightening tool, tighten every jar in the house, and watch his self-confidence flourish. Well, chances are you're going to think I'm lying, but here we are at the end of another episode. As good a reason as any to make babotti. Oh, what? My word, Sagoni. Babotti, a spicy South African stew topped with a baked savoury custard. And it smells all right. Yes, it certainly does. Just like my mother used to make. And I know it'll taste just as good. She looks after you, Dr Rudy. Yeah, spoils you rotten. Excuse me, the babotti's for everyone. There are no favourites here. Sure. Now make sure you join us next week when your four favourite lifestylists return. That's right, because we've got more advice that you won't find on any other lifestyle show. And you Australians be good to one another. And in the meantime, remember out there that all is not as it seems. Now, to take us out tonight, we've got something very special. That's right, it's a reprise performance from our very own Penny with a new hit single, Remember December. Good, good night, night, Australia. Australia. Our very own little singer, buddy.